Grace, mercy, and peace to you through Christ our Savior. Amen. Hello, and thank you for inviting me into your worship today. I am happy to explore God's Word for us in this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Now today, we have a reading that seems to go all over the place in its examples. Seeds, yeast, buried treasure, jewels, and fishing. I'd like to focus on just one of those examples, yeast. But before I do that, let me share with you my story of how I ended up where I am, serving the church as a bishop. I grew up in the Lutheran Church. My family is not what I would call devout. We went most Sundays. My dad took a turn on council. My mom sang in the choir. But we didn't go every Sunday. And I missed church for hockey games or sometimes just to sleep in. But when we did go to church, my mom would always ask me and my brother what we heard in the sermon. We had about 25 minutes on the drive home to really think about the message and to talk about how the sermon impacted us, to reflect on what we learned about God and faith. At my first Canadian Lutheran youth gathering, now called Clay, one of the musicians there played guitar and led us in singing. To this day, I don't know who it was. But that person brought me to a new way of connecting to God and inspired me to want to share that with others. When I got back from the gathering, I started teaching myself to play the guitar. And when I knew just a few chords, a friend who was involved in campus ministry invited me to play with them at their monthly services. I learned more about music and about God than ever before, thanks to Pastor Art's leading. Soon after, that group started traveling to other congregations to give them a taste of contemporary music. Spending time in the car and on the road with Bishop Elaine, or Pastor Elaine as she was known back then, helped me to grow more as she mentored our group and left space for open questions and discussions. She eventually asked me to take a small leadership role at a youth retreat and then bigger roles later on. After a while, it became clear that my pastoral, that pastoral ministry was my calling. Doing church work during business hours and then lying on my timesheet about it was the big hint. And so I completed my undergraduate degree while I kept working in my previous profession. And then I went to Saskatoon for seminary. I continued to be formed through my schooling, through internship, and in each call that I have had since. The Spirit has then since since seen fit to put me in this role serving the church. And in this role, I need to make sure I pay attention to my faith practice, to learn even more how I need to rely on God for the strength and direction in what I do. And while many people assume that a bishop's role is to have power or authority, it's actually a role of service to our church. Now, through this ongoing series of small, almost invisible events, Beginning in my childhood, I was formed and incorporated into a larger body of believers. I was influenced and surrounded by those who were witnessing to God's reign and actively following Christ. Through those many people and examples, I was changed. And through me, I hope the people around me were changed as well. Now that's my story of faith and vocation. Why did I share that? Well, two reasons. First, I want to give an example of how we can tell our stories to other people, how we can talk about faith and about our journey with people that we worship and serve with. And secondly, I wanted to share that story because I think it fits particularly well with the reading for today. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus said that God's reign in the world is like the yeast that a woman baking bread might mix with flour. To a large extent, the yeast stays hidden in the dough. We can't see it, and we can't separate it out, but it is vital in order for the dough to rise. The yeast changes the flour and water into something else, and even a small amount can have a drastic effect on the development and shape of something. When I look back, I can see how many small, almost invisible actions became part of who I am. I can see how people events, interactions, and experiences have changed me 
have shaped my faith and life, have molded me, and made me grow. Individually, those things would have stayed hidden, but together they have a profound effect. So what is your story? What brought you to faith? Who or what has helped you grow in your faith and develop into the person that you are? How is your faith still vital to your life? Think about those questions. And then think about how you have acted like the yeast for someone else's faith story. How have your faith, your words, and your example helped others to grow and to be shaped in faith? Do others know your story or how faith plays a role in your life? You see, in Matthew's story, the woman is making the equivalent of about 40 loaves of bread. Now, it takes more than one grain of yeast to have an effect. So your pastor or your deacon or other leaders can't do this on their own. Transforming someone's path of faith takes a lot of little instances to transform. We need each of our members to claim and share how you see yourselves as children of God. We need more than one story of how God leads and empowers God's people. We need more than one voice talking about God's centrality in our lives so that others can also hear the story and be transformed by it. You, yes, each of you is engaged in this task and has an important part to play in growing faith in the people that we share our lives with. And it is the cumulative effect of these small interactions and experiences that has the biggest impact. So you are helping to shape faith every time a member of the congregation calls our youth by name, every time someone is thanked for their contribution to ministry, no matter how small or how imperfect. Every time a person's gifts are recognized and when they are asked to build up the community by using them. Every time we welcome someone with open arms when they are not normally welcomed in other places. Every time we engage in conversation with someone about why faith matters to them and to us. And every time we pray for one another. It is through this work that we walk alongside God's reign in the world. This is how we transform the church and build health within the church. This is how we are able to recognize the immeasurable gifts that God gives the world, so valuable that we are willing to give up everything else in order to pursue them. Because, let's be honest, without faith, we're just a group of people trying to maintain a building and sing some songs together. Without faith, none of this really matters. Faith must be central to who we are, what we do, and how we engage in the world. And Christ is the one who continually reaches out to us through the waters of baptism to immerse us and shower us with the gift of faith so that we can be God's people. It is only through faith that we encounter the God who enlivens us and animates us and inspires us and leads us and sends us into the world to transform those around us. It is only through Christ that we have the ability to do these things and to share in the life and ministry that God is already doing in the world. So please share your story. Let others see how you have been transformed by your faith and help others to transform. Be the yeast that grows and makes your community what it is. Look for where God is already active in your community and take part in that life-giving work. This is the most important work that we can do as members and as congregations. I will pray for you in that work. And trust that you will see God's richest blessings as you continue on that path of faith. Amen.